Good afternoon. Welcome to Robin Minds here on Channels Television. My name is Cheka Ago, and I'm sitting in for Ibuka Obi Uchendu. It's been a very difficult week for Nigerians across the country. Um, and today we're going to try to make sense of all the things that made its way into the news. And here with me to do that is my very good friend, Fuller Daniel. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Um, congratulations on surviving another week out here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Fuller, let's do this. The federal government, we understand, is in talks with the World Bank yeah. for a 1.5 billion Naira budget support yeah. loan. Yeah. What do you think of this? One of the things that the economists have told us repeatedly is that we're not supposed to borrow for consumption. We're supposed to borrow for production, for manufacturing, for infrastructure and any other thing that has to do with what we call capital goods. In other words, you're getting the money to produce infrastructure, to create more businesses, to create opportunities, maybe to invest in ICT, artificial intelligence, manufacturing sector, infrastructure. If you're doing that, it's absolutely okay. But when you just borrow the money and throw it at people, most likely, People are going to be giving that money. They're going to spend it anyhow. We're not going to see the impact on our national budget as a whole. So it's not such a good idea to keep borrowing so that we can support the budget. The budget itself, if you take a look at the entire budget over uh, 10 trillion there, you realize that more than 60% of that budget is actually what they call recurrent expenditure, meaning that we the budget that we create on a yearly basis, we spend more than 60% of it, you know, just servicing debt, you know, paying salaries and stuff like that. So that in itself does not make any sense. Our budget should actually show that we're trying to build more of infrastructure. We're trying to create more projects, but we're already in a deficit. How did we get here in the first place? It's because we borrowed a lot of money. That's why we have a budget that shows that we're paying back a lot of loans, a lot of debts on a yearly basis. So if you're going to borrow more, we're going to be in a more difficult place in the coming years because by the time we create the next budget, we then have to make room to service the loan we're about to take for the next budget. Mm. So we're going to be in a perpetual cycle of trying to pay back the money we keep getting. So, and I hear you, it makes logical sense when you put it this way, yeah. but also consider the fact that we have an infrastructural deficit yeah. and you can pick any sector of your choice yeah. and the story is still the same, yeah. right? If it's not underdeveloped, we need to scale up to meet, you know, certain requirements for us to meet global best practice in that sector. But um, at the same time, you're dealing with millions of really hungry people yeah. whom you actually want to create jobs for, yeah. right? So if I, I know that you're not sending anybody hungry or you're not sending anybody to factory on an empty stomach. Um, and so that presents us with the need to balance out the problem, right? We need to feed the people, we yeah. need to help them take care of basic needs. But at the same time, we need to actually build the infrastructure to help us turn profits over time. How do we balance this? The first thing that we're going to do, if we focus more on food than on infrastructure, we're going to come back to where we are or we're going to be worse off. But it's a very important need. That's, that's, food so, is expensive. that's what I'm saying. That's, that's why I'm saying. To the markets, but people are hungry. Regardless of how hungry we are, if, you don't, if the government does not focus on building more, we're going to be worse off. You know why? In the process of building, people will get jobs that are sustainable. Mm. When you try to create more jobs, real jobs, this is just giving handouts, that's when people have something that is actually sustainable over the years. But if you hand them money, the question is, can you sustain giving them that money all the time? So if after three months you can't sustain handing them that money, what are you going to do? They're going to be hungry. You haven't solved the problem. You only give them something to test. Now they want more of it. You can't handle it. So you're going to create additional problems for yourself. What we should do is, for example, take projects across the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria, create major infrastructure projects in each geopolitical zone, and you create jobs as you do that. We're never going to come to the end of infrastructural projects, even in advanced countries. You're constantly maintaining, you're building new things, Technology is evolving. You see the need to build more things. So it never ends. And so long as that doesn't end, people have their jobs sustained. Mm. So it's one thing that we must do. Look into the manufacturing sector, which is what we have to do, and it will take care of a lot of problems. We don't borrow to feed people. And aside the fact that we don't borrow to feed people, the pressure on the dollar naira situation is going to go down. Because we're creating more jobs, and as we're creating more jobs, people have what to eat, and we're not importing what we should be producing right. here in the country. 
So the only solution is for us to build mm. and spend money on infrastructure rather than focusing on feeding people. Okay. So if we are building infrastructure, if we're borrowing to build infrastructure, mm. um, and on the surface that sounds like a good idea, mm. and you know, you've gone into depth, you've gone in depth rather mm. into how you know it makes a lot of sense for us to continue that way. But the people counting the money are saying that it is adding to our debt already, I think was somewhere around 87 trillion Naira. Um, and it jumps that high because of the recent devaluation to mm. our currency. So if we're adding this new World mm. Bank loan to our already existing debt, do you think that it's crushing us? Two uh, things, let me quickly, should I say I should correct two things. First of all, we didn't have what they call devaluation. Mm. It was floating the Naira, which is different from devaluation. Okay. And the other thing is, you said that if borrowing to fix infrastructure looks good on the surface, it's not that it looks good on the surface. It is what it is. It is good. I'll give you a quick example. Look at the Lagos rail system that they're doing right now. Of course, the government does not have the money to do all of that. The government has borrowed the money to fix it. But I haven't done that. The government indirectly has created a lot of jobs. Some of those people that we're going to give stipends to are people who now sell something at the metro line or maybe at the stops that you have in between. Now, somebody who probably didn't have anyone to sell to now has someone to sell to. Someone who wouldn't take that route before now takes that route. So they have somebody to sell to. So when you create infrastructure as you should, directly or indirectly, there are jobs to be created. Somebody manages the ticketing system. Somebody produces the cards. Somebody is actually manning the rail. Somebody is at the train station all the time. Now, the number of buses moving have been doubled. So it's an example of what happens when government focuses on creating infrastructure. Indirectly, you will create multiple jobs across levels. So it is what we must do. Look at what we're doing with China. If we get them to build more roads, it's Nigerians that are actually constructing the roads technically because we also have a rule that you must have at least 60 to 70 percent of Nigerians in your employment. That's the local well, content act. Exactly. So if you're focusing more on infrastructure rather than just handing money to people, when you, most typically most roads are going to be built over four years, sometimes mm -hmm. eight years or even more. So somebody has a guaranteed job for the next eight years. Mm -hmm. If you're going to construct maybe Lagos to be by the expressway like we saw it, the people had jobs for the entire stretch of that time when that road was on. So it's not a three-month palliative measure. If you're going to construct a road for eight years, whether in the east, in the south, in the north, it means that people have a longer and durable or guaranteed job. That, that's what it is for infra infrastructure, and that's why we should focus more on it. And we spend less trying to buy things. Now, this would be in an ideal situation. If we do all of these things that you've said, yeah. you also highlighted what the major outputs will be. Yeah. But in many ways, some would argue that the ideal is not always what you experience here in Nigeria. So um, just coming from past experience, are you in any way convinced that this money, when it comes here to, mm. into the country, would be put to use in this manner that you've just described? In most cases, we can have a 100% execution rate. If we can, if we want to, but it's a systemic thing we know that there are still people in the system who are more focused on their pockets mm -hmm. than on the general populace. So if people are still more focused on their pockets than in the interest of the people, we're still going to have a situation where what should be meant for a project, somebody would actually you know, try to corner a, bit, a, a portion of it for himself. And that happens not just because the contractor wants it so. Sometimes it happens because of the crop of politicians that we have or civil servants that we have. A number of times we blamed politicians and not realizing that it doesn't even have anything to do with politicians. It's the civil servant. Somebody has seen that you've gotten a project of maybe 50 billion naira. And he thinks you, 50 billion, you become rich overnight. How much of this is mine? And refuses to give an approval to your project just because he wants something. And he says, until you give me something, that's, that's something that can happen. But there are ways around it. That's why we sign direct partnerships with China to make sure that some of these projects are not really direct cash. You're not actually getting cash from them or they're not giving you cash. They're coming in, bringing in all the equipment, bringing in all their money. All you have with them is an agreement on paper. Mm. So there's nobody sitting in any office saying that until a portion of this money gets into my pocket, you can't start this thing. So while the systemic issue is there, 
and we're not going to get there overnight. We won't say because of that, we're not going to, we're, we're going to stop it. It's like saying, oh, cars can get bad on the road and because of that, I'll never drive a car or I'll never buy a car. You're still going to keep buying a car. And when there are issues, you fix them. So yes, there are issues, but we're going to fix them. Right. And just off the back of this conversation, um, it would be interesting to make of to find out what you make of the 25,000 naira palliative mm. for 15 million households that this current administration is hoping to embark on. It's going to happen for three months. <laughs> so I'm not going to go against it completely because mm. whether we like it or not, it's not everybody that can instantly come up with something that they can do for themselves. Mm -hmm. There are people who are extremely poor in this country, whether we like it or not. And for the fact that they are extremely poor, you would be surprised to see what 25,000 naira can do for some households in rural areas, not in the urban area, of course. So yes, it's something that we should work on. However, I would wish that we're not borrowing to get that money for them. I would wish that we're doing cost cutting from the cost of governance to do that kind of a thing. For example, the money, the cars, senators or members of the House of Reps are trying to buy, we can cut that cost, take out of that money to give it to them. We can reduce the number of aids that ministers, presidents, senior government officials are entitled to and, you know, take a part of that cost and use it to do that kind of a thing. Not that we're borrowing to do that kind of a thing. So it's not a bad idea if it's going directly to the extremely poor people. The po question is, where is the money coming from? Right. If we're taking it from what we have to give to them, acceptable. But if you're borrowing to do that, unacceptable, regardless of how good it looks. Right. Also this week, um, it was the third year memorial of the Nikki toll gate shooting. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you went through the toll gates um, on that day. We, we saw heavy police presence. Mm -hmm. And for many Nigerians, especially young Nigerians, mm -hmm. the question is, where is justice? Having followed the conversation all these years, mm. do you think that the government in handling um, the NSAS protest has, you know, done a good job of, you know, giving justice to those who deserve it? So we can send something to the government, go to sleep, wake up three years later and expect that the government has something waiting for us. The media went to sleep on the lucky matter. The individuals who were agitating also went to sleep on it. And of course, the government relaxed. So it's a three point triangle. And only one angle is being held accountable, and that's the government. What about the media? What about the people? Did we follow up? Did we mount pressure? Did we ask them, we're still waiting to hear from you? How far have you gone? What is the situation? So we shouldn't just blame the government for what we should have held them accountable for three years later. We should have monitored or continually asked them, where are we on this? What has happened on this? Now, on the part of the government, which you're supposed to face, I'm not excusing the government. I think that the government also should be more responsible in giving us updates. This is what we are doing differently. This is how far we have come. This is what you're going to see. We, ha we, we haven't seen much of that because the, it was after the Lekito gate that the lawyer was just shot. Mm. And thankfully, People are seeing justice with the case of the female lawyer that was shot because the police officer who shot her has now been sentenced. So we, we understand that, like I said earlier, things may not happen overnight. We're getting there gradually. Right. And I think that that judgment alone has served as a deterrent. So while it does not directly connect with the lucky issue, it just may be a glimpse of hope that at least something is going to happen. Well, let's see what happens next. Fala Daniel. Thank, thank you, you so you much. Very much.